Good morning. Uh, good morning. For being 30 seconds late, it's his, it's his fault. Okay. Not mine. Even though I was still wrestling around trying to find all my stuff. Yeah, these guys are going to drift in slowly, too. <laughs> well, um, stuff going on today. So, uh, Sorry. Well, we're going to sing for all the unsung saints. It's number 678. And uh, boy, there's a lot of things to think about when you sing a song like this. Mm -hmm. You know, the, all the unsung saints. We're thinking of, of uh, Jonathan and Saul and David's song for them, which is what we're reading today in Second Samuel. But um, we have a lot of unsung saints, a lot of people that the Lord used to make a difference somehow. And maybe not some grandiose way, but uh, they were important. And we've, we've lost quite a few, it seems like, uh, in these last two months at a lot mm -hmm. of funerals. Um, yeah, well... Let's sing number 678. <clears throat> we sing for all the unsung saints that count countless nameless throng who kept the faith and Second Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and Jonathan his son. And he said it should be taught to the people of Judah. Behold, it is written in the book of Jashar. He said, Your glory, O Israel, is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul 
and Jonathan, beloved and lovely. In life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. You daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you luxuriously in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant have you been to me. Your love to me was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perish. You know, the funny thing, when, um, when you listen to songs that are about grief, they're, they're often about uh, my feelings, how I feel empty or sad, or, you know, um, or about the, the wonderfulness of the one that was lost. David's focus uh, at, at the first, most important part of this, song, the beginning of this song, is the, is the impact on the nation. That the whole nation is poorer because of the loss of Saul and Jonathan. This is his enemy. Bear, bear in mind that. Uh, but this was the king of Israel. And God had used Saul to bless Israel. They were not enslaved to the Philistines, right? They had been at that point where they, I mean, they couldn't have a blacksmith uh, lest they make, I mean, they had to take their farm implements down to the Philistines to be sharpened because uh, they weren't allowed to do that sort of thing themselves. They weren't, they didn't want to, didn't want those Israelites to have any scissors, right? Any Anything that might be used as a weapon. That's how oppressed they were. And then under Saul, as as evil, as dishonest, as uh, as corrupted as he became, or, or obsessed with his own glory and, and his own importance, still he did blessing to the nation. And still God, he was God's instrument for their good. And so he says, your glory, O Israel, is slain on the high places. And and he doesn't want the news to go out because he doesn't want the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, to rejoice. But uh, but the place where they died, he says, shouldn't even get any moisture, any rain or dew anymore because it was this terrible thing that happened there. Uh, the shield of the mighty was defiled. The shield, you know, the which is also a sign, uh, a symbol of. Uh, of their nobility, and their, the, the, it's really not just Saul's shield, but the shield of the nation, protection of the nation, was uh, rubbed in the dirt, brought down to the dirt. And then, then he praises Saul and Jonathan for their courage, that they did not hold back, but they ran toward the enemy, and they defended God's people. Um, that they were united, and which you might puzzle about that. You know, on at one occasion, Saul throws his spear at his son Jonathan, and Jonathan, of course, was united with David, and yet he was there serving his father. Uh, no matter what else had gone on, Jonathan was still there faithfully serving and leading a part of the army and so on going into battle when the Philistines brought all their people together to, to go and subjugate the Israelites again, these people offered their lives. They risked their lives. They put themselves out there for the people around them. Saul also did that. Saul, the guy who consulted a witch, you know, the guy who practiced necromancy, the guy who... who uh, thought more of himself than of God. Um, still, he was a blessing to the nation. And so he calls upon the nation to lament, not just himself. 
It's not just David's lament, but throughout all these verses so far, he's saying it's the, the nation should grieve and weep at their death. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. And then finally at verse 26, uh, he expresses his own grief that that he loved Jonathan very much. And it's so disgusting. It's so upsetting that people have to, that four-letter word, love, in our society now, can only mean sexual desire. I, do you not love anybody else except uh, a person with whom you're sexually intimate? Is that the only kind of love we have? And yet, uh, the, this assumption, your love to me was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. In, in other words, it was. this is a different kind of thing. David obviously has maybe a little too much love for women. He has half a dozen wives already and half a dozen sons by them. But this was something different. And, and an extraordinary thing, an unselfish uh, love for one another. They supported one another to the extent that Jonathan was willing to see David on Jonathan's throne. Um, they had a loyalty to one another, which is a rare thing to find. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished. David sings all this. He desires the nation to grieve because of, because of the inherent value of what they've lost. But David himself will take this place. The weapons of war have perished, but David is carrying weapons of war. He's carrying Goliath's weapons, in fact. And, and he has a small, very small army. And in the next section, in chapter 2, he will step up to a next higher position, uh, not to king just yet over all of Israel, but uh, he also will not just seize power, but rather offer himself for the defense of his nation and his people and, and the upholding of their faith. It is their faith in the true God that will be crushed and destroyed if the nation is destroyed. And so, uh, he trusts in God to lead them. And yet he grieves. And we do too, right? We, we lose uh, faithful warriors. Soon, soon to faithful warriors comes their rest, one of our hymns says. And uh, some of our faithful Partners in this battle have come to their rest. But we carry on. And we are called to step up to that, uh, to that battle line and carry on the banner of the gospel of Jesus Christ in this world for the good of the nation, right? For the good of the world, for the good of the church of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these unsung saints. Jonathan and Saul, they were, they were honored by David. There were hundreds, perhaps thousands of others who died on that day as well. Lord, there are famous people. At the end of every year, there's always this list of the celebrities who've passed away. But we... We know not very famous people who are your precious instruments in our lives and the lives of our church and our community, your kingdom. Lord, we pray for Lois Spade's family. She passed away very suddenly this last week. Dear Lord, we thank you for these gifts. And we, we trust that you will Give us uh, the strength to carry on tasks that they began. 
and to serve you boldly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.